What's happening guys, it's Stu from Trial Talk here. Hope you're all keeping good. In this video today, we're gonna to discuss blown plaster and how to recognize that. Uh, so on the Facebook group, one of the members who's a new plasterer, a beginner plasterer, he reached out to myself and he asked the question, Stu, how do you recognize blown plaster when working in older properties? Um, and how can you tell the difference between plaster that can be skimmed and mashed, which as you know, um, I do a lot of. All these walls here have been mashed guys and skimmed um, using the fiberglass mesh here. But I've got a good example today. Uh, so I thought I'd take some content and just show you guys that might be new learning um, apprentices. We might just own an older property yourself now you don't need to be a qualified plasterer to recognize when plaster's shot, when it's blown. Um, it's basically common sense. However, some people not, might not be aware um, you know, what they're looking at. So now I've got a 1930s semi here in Warwick. 90% of these walls that you can see are all in sound condition. And when I say sound condition, what I mean is if you just make a closed fist and bang on the wall like that, or you could knock the wall. Now that pitch that you can hear there, that determines uh, whether the plaster's shot or not. And that's what most spreads will do. They'll come in and they'll tap the wall like this. And the pitch will tell them, and obviously whether there's any movement also in the plaster, but usually the pitch of, um, of that sound will, will tell them whether the plaster's shot or not. Now, of course, there are some, as you can see here, there are some um, hairline cracks, guys, that have been filled in previously by the owner with filler. Here's some here, look. But again, when you tap the wall, um, you can tell that it sounds quite dense. So these cracks are, are actually superficial. Now this is a sand and cement um, uh, mixture that's gone on. It's the, the original plaster. So most of the walls were like this. A few stress cracks running through. They've been patched up with some gypsum, some polyfiller over the years. But overall, they're nice and plumb and they're sound, they're, they're what we, we call sound, they're in sound condition. So that means we can scrape them back, take any loose paint and, and skim plaster off there, prime it, and then we'll mesh and skim. We've done many videos on that. But over this side of the wall, it's a different story. So we'll go and have a look at this. Now all this section here, guys, is completely shot to bits and blown. Now you would not mash over this surface, it's too far gone. And I'll show you what I mean. So over there, I tapped the wall, it sounded dense. It sounded relatively solid. Now, if you listen to this, not sure whether the video will pick that sound pitch up and whether it sounds different, but there's a hollow sound. It sounds completely hollow when you, when you tap the wall. Okay, so that tells me straight away there's a problem. The plaster, the backing plaster, has actually blown off the, off the brick, off the masonry. So another telltale sign is movement in the plaster. Now, flaky skim coats like this, not necessarily anything to worry about, providing that your backing coat here is still solid. But in this case, it's not, because if, if I tap the backing coat, it's hollow and blown. So this section here, all of this is gonna to have to come off. It's gonna to have to go back to brick. And if you look here, if I if I was to push this in, let's see if I can pick it up. If I was to put pressure on here, you might be able to see that the plaster is actually, I'm able to push, compress the plaster in. And I can pick, I can literally pick this away with my fingertips. I can dig away. And if I 
if I dig enough of this away, I could probably show you exactly what I mean when I say blown plaster. So let's let's take the camera inside that cavity and have a look. Now you can clearly see there guys that this wall, this section of this wall is completely delaminated. You see here the backing plaster is completely delaminated from, from the brick. Um, so it, it's blown. So I can literally pull this away with my with my fingertips. I can literally just pull the wall away. So that's how you recognise um, blown plaster. Literally just tap the wall, you'll hear a difference in pitch. Um, you could remove some of the plaster like I've just shown. Um, you can try compressing the plaster. If you are a homeowner, you, you own an older property, always best to get a qualified plaster in to assess the walls before you start taking the shovel to the wall. And because in many cases, like this section over here, is solid and sound doesn't need to come off. Once that's meshed, it won't crack because it's not blown. It's just got a few stress cracks running through. Now the window walls, you'll find, always take an absolute pommel in because these are nine inch solid walls. The mortar on the outside is probably, you know, seen better days. It's probably hundred years old, this property. And over time, um, driven rain will work through those mortar joints, causing stress, slight movement to the internal skin. So the window walls take a bit of a pommel in, which is why you find on a lot of properties, the window walls are always shot and blown and the internal walls tend to be okay. Sometimes all the plaster's blown, but typically the window walls will, will take a pommel in. But again, if you look here, completely delaminated. I probably made that a bit worse by picking away at it, but you can see, I can just, pull this I can just pull this all away and I've just exposed the mortar joints and you can see that the mortar between the bricks is also just as old as the backing coat on the inside so if I get my thumbnail and dig away at that mortar, you can see there, look, that's just dug away with my thumbnail there. The mortar between the bricks is just as old and fragile as the backing coat on the inside. So what do we do in this situation? We'll just keep picking it away until we find sound plaster is what we do. So I'll just take the claw of your hammer, for example, or anything, a chisel, um, and just keep, just keep pulling the plaster away. Until you find, until it stops. Um, now here it's been patched up in the past, which is why it's stopped here. Cause I think they've used Looks like they've used um, a hard wall or something like that. I mean, they've probably changed the window and lost some of the plaster and made good using um, hard wall. Probably the worst material um, to use, to be honest, on, on a, an outside nine inch solid wall because gypsum draws moisture. So I'll probably end up stripping all this away um, along with most of this section here. And what I'll do is I'll put a sand and cement mix in. <coughs> Uh, with a bit of waterproof chucked in there just to make sure that um, because because the mortar shot between the bricks that'll ensure that um, the plaster doesn't draw moisture from that nine inch solid wall so yeah keep picking away um, until you find again it's been patched up with all sorts of stuff I don't know what this stuff is here but that's solid that looks like a one coat a one coat uh, plaster and it's absolutely solid and I'll try and show you yeah 
quite thick there. So you'll find, you'll often find on these old properties, you'll have like, you know, you take the wallpaper off and it's like a patchwork quilt where over, over the decades, people have just chucked in, you know, all sorts of products and materials. Often the homeowners will, will have a DIY attempt at, uh, at fixing the wall before wallpapering. Oftentimes there'll be all sorts of different materials hashed together. So um, before you start skimming, just check over your walls. Uh, make sure nothing's blown, make sure everything's plumb. Make sure the right products are being used. Again, on a nine inch solid wall, for an outside wall, ideally, in an ideal world, you wanna be using the sand and cement, really. Um, or, you know, like a dry coat, something that's gonna hold off that, um, that damp and that moisture that penetrating damp is these these holes here in your mortar joints that's gonna that's gonna allow vapor to pass through and that's gonna hit your plaster on the inside and over time that that moisture can work through and create damp and mold issues uh, penetrating damp it's called so i hope that's helped today guys um, any questions on blown plaster drop them in the comments I'll always aim to answer any questions that you have and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.